So why, why did I stand in the first place? Well, uh, it was a, almost a complete accident, really. Um, I, uh, I, so I've had a, health, a career in the health service. Uh, I was a psychiatrist and then a medical director, and then I worked for Hewlett Packard for a few, few years. And once I quit that, retired that about at the age of 57, I um, really, really got into climate change and reading about it and learning about it. Uh, and in fact, I'd been concerned about it right back since the 90s, but increasingly concerned as time went on. And what I read made me really worried. And then one day I looked on the telly and there was Extinction Rebellion on a bridge. And I thought, my God, someone's doing something about, about this. And I cried and I took my son down the next day and my two daughters down two days later. And um, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a late developer, so I have children who are 11, 9 and 6. And I do spend my time worrying about them. And so um, that sort of got me out of my malaise and got me active. And I joined um, something Sue, Sue Roberts had called South Oxfordshire Sustainability. I have no idea how I, I have found it, but I did. And I joined that. And then her husband, of course, runs XR for Wallingford, which was great. And I went to the meetings. And I must have said something vaguely intelligent at one of them, because Sue said to me, have you ever thought of standing for the county council? And I said, no, never even considered it. And she said, what do you think about it? I said, would it make a difference? She said, yes. And there was a by-election and that was about five weeks after I had that conversation. So uh, the December of the general election, I was suddenly in a by-election, which I blundered through largely with the help in fact of the Lib Dems um, and, uh, and weekend forays from Oxford by Greens there. Um, and I won, uh, perhaps by surprise, really. Um, I have to say Wallingford is a slightly funny area. So I represent Wallingford, the Whitnams and Brightwell. And uh, there's a, like the new mayor of Wallingford, Marcus Harris is a conservative, but he's one of my supporters. And he told me that um, he was at a count with Ed Davey once and Wallingford voted overwhelmingly Lib Dem and the rest of the area voted Conservative, so Ed Davey won. Um, and so I am in a very, a slightly odd bubble there. Um, and I was then the lone green on the County Council. Um, luckily the Lib Dems sort of felt sympathy for me and they'd also got me elected, so they felt some sort of responsibility. So they took pity and, and I met with their, their group every week. And I think actually I probably am significantly responsible for upping their game on climate change. I think they they found some of the things I said quite quite su surprising and quite concerning. And so by the time we came to the council elections, they were running on a very strong climate change footing. So 18 months later, anyway, last May, I ended up doing another election campaign. And this one, I the worst moments, by the, by the way, while we're here, the worst moment was at the beginning of that when I had three children, three primary school aged children still at home from school. And that's like having a cluster bomb in your front room every morning um, that doesn't really and it destroys productivity and re renders you completely, completely brain fried. Uh, it makes you very glad, actually, that there's a state sector to outsource them to. Um, anyway, so that, that was that was probably the worst experience of being a councillor. Um, and actually the best experience, one of the best experiences was just before that, in the December before that, I put a motion to the County Council um, to make 20 miles an hour the default speed limit in built up areas. Um, and it went through um, unanimously. And I thought I'd been thinking about not standing again. And that was the thing that made me most made me change my mind because oh you can do something being a politician um, and then we had the election and as you know we have a Lib Dem Green pact and basically everywhere that the Greens stood down for the Lib Dems they won and we won three seats where they had st stood down for, for us and all of a sudden the Lib Dems and Greens together was the biggest group and we got to but and we got first dibs at forming a a coalition which we did and my second most exciting experience probably was actually those coalition talks because when we looked at what we'd all written in our manifestos we all agreed 
And we all agreed particularly that climate change was top, top priority, climate environment. And that's very interesting <clears throat> because in fact, even before the election, there'd been a debate on the Climate and Ecological Emergency Bill, um, asking the leader of the council then, Ian Hudspeth, to uh, support it and lobby the MPs to support it. And that went through with only five people voting against. So most of the Conservatives voted for it after what I thought was one of the most mature debates I've seen. That may not be a high bar, but it was a mature debate. <laughs> um, and so you suddenly realize there is this massive political convergence around actually the environment and climate is important. And on the doorstep, that's borne out. Um, it, it, when I was first elected, I started my spiel on every doorstep with I'm in the Green Party because I'm worried about climate change. 90 odd percent of people nodded and said, yep, so am I, or words to that effect. Um, I didn't campaign so much on that. I did what the Green Party says in this one. I got hyper local. I got down to areas of Wallingford that I had a different pitch for. And I absolutely went, once my children had been suitably suffocated by the state sector, I, I went out and smashed on doors a lot, uh, met probably a thousand people. And every time I asked about climate change, I'd ask, how worried are you on a scale of naught to five? And 80% of people said five. Uh, and, and it was very clear that climate is a very mainstream thing. And then since then, uh, I then got appointed to the post of um, climate change and environment, which is sort of my dream post really, um, because it, plays to, it lets me play to a lot, lot of the experience that I've got and the real in interest I have. And the County Council is ready for that. It, I was surprised how green it was. Uh, I think my predecessor, Yvonne Constance, was, a, was secretly underneath the waterline going against her, her party and doing a lot more on climate than she gave away every, every now and then you got this hint that she was doing something and I oh, did find yeah. out I have found out from officers that she had this sort of secret program under that, that was going on that she didn't necessarily tell her her team about uh, and indeed she described them to me the other day as idiots the conservatives so anyway um and that so the experience of walking into a council that's been under the Conservatives actually forever. The Conservatives have never previously been out of power in Oxfordshire. This is the first time they haven't been at least part of the ruling group. Um, and I'm the first Green cabinet member as well. So there's a there's some nice firsts for us. And um, the experience of that is of officers being very, very, very willing to move and shift pretty fast. There are some, that's not necessarily true of all the transport people and we're having fairly bare knuckle fights over a couple of roundabouts um, because uh, the officers, the currently, the current um, roundabout thing, there's a database you feed all your stuff into and it says based on what people are currently doing, this is how big the roundabout needs to be. Now, of course, you then feed in the number of houses you're going to build and it tells you build a huge one uh, and, and, and my most recent realization really is that actually the road to climate hell is is paved with people making excellent decisions on the basis of business as usual which i think is what joe has also said and sam said basically you have to you have to break the business as usual miasma and say no no business as usual in the last 30 years has made things infinitely worse this has to be business as unusual um and um I'm in, the other thing that's rather clever about the coalition is I'm in a triumvirate, so I'm in a, in a, a, a trio with a Labour and a Lib Dem, and we do climate and transport together. And it is difficult to get a fag paper between us on beliefs and what, what we think ought to happen, which is a, a, a great experience. And we are pretty radical about pushing active transport uh, of all sorts and that actually car numbers have got to come down a lot uh, and that we will do what it takes to get that done. And at the beginning of a four year period, it's a very good time to do really disruptive stuff because there's time for people to forget what you did and forgive you for it in the run up to the ne next elections. Um, 
what else? Yes, I, I think I think there's a phrase I I was talking about today with one or two of them. We need to look at the social value of transport infrastructure. So it's not about how many cars it takes. If it takes cars and horses and bike bicycles and walkers, then it's got much higher social value than if it just takes cars and blasts them through the middle of your village as fast as possible. Um, and then heavy lorries because it's the quickest route between two points. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so that. Oh, the other thing, election pitch. Um, so I consciously pitch, it, it depends what area you're sta standing in, but actually we need to remember that there is a strong thread of small C conservatism in the middle of green. In the middle of green is about keeping what, what is good and enhancing what they used to be. And those are very conservative values. Uh, and, and actually, I, I deliberately pitched a lot of my campaign at soft conservatives because I figured I'd get Labour. I'd certainly got the Lib Dems because they were they stepped down for me. I'd got the Greens anyway. And so I, I pitched it for, for that. And I don't know whether that worked, but certainly um, I, my, my majority this time was nearly as big as my entire vote last time. So uh, something worked. That's... Yeah, I'll stop and take questions. Uh, Sarah? Thanks, Pete. Um, one of the things that I haven't got much of a grasp on at the moment is the relationship between um, the growth board, the LEP and the county, or for that matter, the local authorities generally. Um, are you able to sort of in a kind of noddy's guide, help me just... You and me, you and me both. Yeah, no, I, 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 I have... The, the growth board and the LEP are, are uh, slightly slightly shady quack quangos that seem to make decisions that nobody really has much scrutiny over. However, the growth board is now full of mostly people who are our friends, I think, so that helps. And I've, had, I've been on the first meeting of the growth board uh, climate and environment advisory group which um, which doesn't seem to be that useful. I, I, uh, I mean, I, uh, I find it quite amazing that we've been in the middle of a climate emergency. We've declared climate emergencies and we're still set, setting up advisory group rather, rather than program boards. But um, that's, that, that will be what, what I would drive for. And I think we need to, I did manage to, in, I did manage to get one paper accepted by the growth board in my last um, uh, which was credited with shifting their stance on climate change a lot because I set out the evidence in about three, three, four pages, including graphs and stuff, just showing exactly how bad things were. And I think I think that may have caused a, a slight shift in thinking away from, oh, well, climate change is a distant thing that's going to affect our grandchildren <clears throat> and great grandchildren to, oh, cripes, it's affecting us now. Um, but I don't, I don't really understand them. And then there's the arc and then there's <clears throat> the, there are a whole load of, of moving parts, none of which are particularly transparent from, from where, where I am, but I'm at, at the moment, I'm still grasping my own port, portfolio, to be honest. Uh, and, uh, and when I've got that, then I'll start wandering up the ladder wherever I can. Okay, thanks. I mean, there isn't time now, but I mean, I think there's quite a lot of us who'd like to understand, you know, that, yeah, where the arc fits. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I know it's too big, too big. No, I'll, I mean, I will tell you there is a, there, there is quite a shift. I think Joe, Joe is right. Joe and Joe and this sort of seditious green stuff has really crept into every, everyone's thinking. We've all been planting phrases in there and they all appear in, in documents and, um, Bev, Bev Hindle, who's leading the, the, the arc, I think was ahead of the time in saying, actually, this needs to be about, uh, he still says green growth, and I think green growth is an oxymoron, and we all know that. Um, but it has to be about, about things that are, uh, that value the climate, that, that enhance the, the, the environment, that are lo lovely places to live, that you've actually got to have uh, a social levelling uh, that, that inequality in, in itself is not a good thing. Um, and, um, and I don't think he's alone now. I think, I think there is a, 
there is a very I, I think there is a very, very rapid shift in 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 thinking in the zeitgeist in politics away from well, it's away from climate denial. No one. No, there's not many people in that now. It's it's to, it's towards. Well, the conservatives have certainly gone to talking a great talk on climate and then being beaten up by the Committee on Climate Change about the fact that they're just talking um, and they're beginning to be de desperate. So, so they're starting to do some stuff which is hopeful. Uh, and I, I do think I do think there's a big shift. Um, and we may, if we are lucky, we may be surfing a wave that that takes, takes green, green stuff much higher than we expect much faster than we expect. Um, which I guess means that you guys who are thinking of standing as councillors stand a much better chance of being elected than you think. <laughs>